Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the mighty God. Say for glory and grace. For glory and grace. 
If you want to be first in your life, fill up the first seat. Amen. If you want to be first in your life, take advantage of every first seat. Don't sit at the back. If you must be the first in your life, the first in everything that you do, sit in front. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So are you glad to be in class today? Yes. We have an interesting topic that the Lord, of course, every topic in the class is interesting. I want to look at the, the truth about angels and by grace with time we'll be able to discuss the exhaustive let's bow our heads and pray father we thank you lord may jesus be forever glorified lord reveal secrets to us even as we open our hearts and our minds to be instructed by your spirit lord show us things beyond the human reason and by the ability of your spirit, we'll be able to comprehend these truths. And it will continually be our everyday consciousness. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Why? <clears throat> Yesterday morning, as early as 6 a.m. or 6.30 a.m. There about. That was where the Lord began to reveal the truths of angels to us. Um, there was no place to write it better than this place. See? <laughs> the truth about angels. <laughs> this is, and then this side. This was where we ended. So these are the things we want to discuss. The truth about angels. Because the Lord said, Lucy, I know you don't like to write in a book. So write it to me. So that I can, you know, if you carry your Bible, you know it's there. The truth about angels. Many people do not know about angels. And most of you probably have heard of angels, but you do not really know the truth about them. And that is the reason for the fear. Because you do not know the angels. And if you can get to know who they are, then they can appear to you. Because that is God's desire for you to see them. Now, there are about how many people on the face of the earth? Seven billion, seven billion right? Mm -hmm. Let's suppose there are about seven billion people on the face of the earth. <coughs> there are more demons on the face of the earth than humans. There are more demons. 
more demons on the face of the earth than humans. Demons are everywhere. But the unfortunate thing is that this is where many Christians end up. They know about the ministry of demons. <laughs> and not know the ministry of angels. But the good news is that we have more angels. More angels than demons. More angels than demons. On the face of the earth too. Because God knows that there are more demons than humans on the face of the earth, he had to deploy multitudes of angels. Praise God. Now, there are more, <clears throat> everyone on the face of the earth, right from where you were born, you were assigned to an angel. Which many people call guardian angel. And he was supposed to be there with you all the days of your life. Say amen. amen. But the kind of life you live will determine whether that angel will remain with you or walk away. The kind of life you live will determine whether the angels will still remain with you. Or you, you will now be guided by what you call the guardian demons. So there are Christians today who are even being guided by guardian demons instead of angels because of the kind of life they live. And it shouldn't be. The angel that the Lord assigns to you is not someone that desires to leave, leave you. His assignment is to abide with you forever to the very end. That's his assignment. But the kind of life you live will determine whether he will still be there with you or he will be replaced by a guardian demon. But before we get into all of that deeply, let's look at the... Let's look at angels, really, before we now start looking at their operations. So today, we're going to look at angels. The truth about angels. Say it. Truth about angels. Are you glad to be in class today? Yes. How many of you really want to know about angels? I know. Amen. And they are here, too. They are here. They are here. To even they attend every class. They attend every class because, like we said, they know more about God through what we, as God's children, teach. They know about God through what we teach. Even though they are in heaven, <laughs> they know more about us. And they know about they know more about heaven and God. By what we teach in our churches. That is why ministers need to be careful what they teach in their churches. Because the angels are also there to attend service, to take notes. And so if you misinform them, it's sad. So that a minister is complaining that his church is not growing. No, look at the quality of the world. Because if the angels are not even attending service, how can people come? Spiritual matters are not, are not things that you handle with sense knowledge. They are not things you handle with feelings or sentiments. They are not. They are too serious for, they are too serious to be handled with levity. Angels. Angels are creatures. And by that we mean they are created. 
The Hebrew word is bara. B A C dot on top of the A in front. Bara. Bara means to create. So angels were created. Say it. Say angels, angels. are created. They were created. How many of you believe angels were created? Who created them? God himself. God created angels. And anything that is created cannot be worshipped. Anything that is created cannot be what? Worshipped. That was the problem Lucifer had. Him, being a created being, was demanding worship. Let's see what the Bible has to say about that. Go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Evangelist Monica, can you read verses 18 to us? Colossians chapter 2. Yes. I have the NIV with me, but I would like you to also read the King James first before we read the NIV. Colossians chapter 2, verse 18. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels, intruding into those things which he had not seen. There is, okay. Then he puffed up by his fleshly mind. Amen. Now, that, that may be a little too confusing for you, but let's read from the NIV. What he's trying to say there, that Evangelist Monica read to us from the Old King James, he says, Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you for the prize. Such a person goes into great details about what he has seen and his own spiritual mind puffs him up with idle, idle notions. There's so much to say on that verse. That's, that's another subject. But the part we want to see there is what? The worship of angels. Angels are not supposed to be worshipped. So don't be deceived by that. There are some churches today who are of the opinion that angels should be worshipped. No, angels should not be worshipped. Why? Because they were what? Created. Anything that is created should not be what? Should not be worshipped. Can you see that? Let's even see a better pic a clearer picture of that. This was remember John the divine was in the island of Patmos and the angel of the Lord appeared to him. Now, there, there's a lot of technicalities concerning studying the book of Revelations. We are going to do a study on the book of Revelations. But somehow you will see sometimes Jesus talking, right, in the book of Revelations. And then you will hear, another time you will see that it was an angel that was talking. And then other times you will see that it was the spirit that was talking. But who was really doing all these things because when you read it, like for those of you who have the old king james you will see where in revelations chapter one chap chapter chapter two even in chapter one and even in chapter two in chapter three you will see that it was marked in red that is an indication that that was jesus talking right yes. but at the end of the day go to revelation chapter 22 please let's pay close attention don't let anything distract you now if you miss it you miss too much Please. If you need anything, get it now before we go deep into this class. Because if you miss a part, we are not repeating it again, no. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Can you read for us? What is your name, ma? What? Okay. So read verses 8 and 9. Make your voice loud, man. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophets, 
and of them which keep the sayings of this book worship God. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. He said, John saw this angel. So it was an angel that was showing him everything in the book of Revelation. Even when Jesus was talking, it was an angel that was showing him all these things. In the island of Patmos. And when he wanted to bow down to worship the angel, the angel said, no, don't worship me. He said, I'm your fellow servant. The one sent even for the, to the prophets. He said, who, who should you worship? He said, worship only who? God. God. So angels cannot be worshipped. They should not be worshipped. Because an ideal angel of God will not demand worship. Any other angel that requires worship, other than the angel of God, is a demon. Praise God. And that is what Lucifer wanted. He wanted worship. He still wants it today. That's why he's in church. <laughs> Lucifer is in church. Alright? Now, there are two classes of angels. You have the good and the bad. Those are just the two classes. The good ones are what? Are the angels of who? God. And then the bad ones are what? The angels of who? Satan. Praise God. Now, there are some most of there are most of you who watch movies and see that um, okay, let's put it this way. Angels are not the spirits of dead men or dead relatives. And there are many preachers who preach that. Even if the person was a Christian and died and then appeared to you, that's not an angel. The Bible says it's appointed for a man to die once and after that, judgment. And that person that appeared to you is not a familiar spirit. I hope you know. Because we have, we have taken time to analyze familiar spirits. You can go on YouTube and listen to that teaching. Familiar voices versus familiar spirits. So that you saw a dead relative appear to you is not a familiar spirit. That's a misconception. A familiar spirit is that spirit that tries to function like the Holy Ghost. That's why he's familiar. He tries to do the things the Holy Ghost does. So somebody can be functioning in an office of a prophet, for instance, with prophecies, but with a familiar spirit. With a familiar spirit. They see too. <laughs> they see. But there's a limitation to how far they can get. And if they see someone who has the light of God, they succumb because they don't like being embarrassed. They don't like being exposed. They don't like being exposed. The Lord said to me, oh, see, the things that will be, will be revealing to you, <laughs> people will, be, they will think you are mad. They think you are, they think you are crazy. But if you lack the knowledge of God's word, you'll be deceived. You will not know. Because they still mention the name of the Lord. And you see, <laughs> let's say this, please. Demons call the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, sometimes there have been that long notion that demons cannot call the name of Jesus. They can. Yeah. Yeah. The seven sons of Skipha, when they met the, the demoniac, what did they say? They said, We adjure you by the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached. It. Get the out. What did the guy say? The demoniac. He said, Jesus, I know. He called Jesus. He called Jesus. Then he said, Paul, I know. He said, Paul, who are you? So demons can call the name of Jesus. <laughs> that is why that you call Jesus and you still have the accident. You're not saying, oh God, why me? God is asking you, who should it be if not you? What a selfish question to ask. You call the name of Jesus. You call the name of Jesus. And that thing still happens. 
It is not by calling the name. It is understanding the authority behind the name. Oh, Lord. We, we took a class on that, right? The yeah. name of Jesus. It's not by calling the name of Jesus. Because even the devils also call that name too. So we say, how dare you say that? But it's true. Praise God. So you see, the angel said, don't worship me. He said, worship who? So angels are not the spirit of dead men. You know, there are some movies you watch on TV. Hollywood, Hollywood movies. And they tell you, oh, he was my angel. You know, he came, right? You know, this. <laughs> Don't get deceived by those things, oh. That's why I want to tell you the truth about angels. So that you're not believing your life based on what you saw in a movie. Because that's what Satan wants to do to you. If he can get you into that arena of believing what you see in the movie, then he has you. Then he has you. You don't find Satan in the synagogue of Satan. You find him where? In church. So what is he doing there? With all the fire, fire that we have been praying. It is not the prayer. <laughs> it is what? The knowledge. The Bible says, true knowledge shall the just be delivered. Was Judas is carried, not with Jesus. Yes. How come the fire of Jesus did not burn him up? He was still eating with Jesus. So how can you say, what is Satan doing in church? Let, let's even confirm that part that we said that angels are not the spirit of dead men. Go to Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two, <coughs> verse ten. Sister Gloria, please you read for us. Second Peter chapter two, verse ten. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Are you learning something? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, this morning. Okay. Sister Gloria, read for yes. us. Second Peter, Peter chapter two, 2 verse 10. ten. Please listen carefully. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise governments, presumptuous of their self willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities continue or oh, 11 is it okay that's your version of... to 10. okay yeah. fine he said now nah, let's read from let's read let's 10. that's your this thing that your version is limited okay, Second let's... peter 2 verse yes, 10. 10. okay fine now nah, he said this is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desires of the sinful nature and despise authority he said, bold and arrogant. Mm. These men are not afraid to slander celestial beings. Mm. To slander celestial beings. This is the N from the NIV, New International Version. So there are certain individuals who slander celestial beings. And it shouldn't be. And he said, they are not afraid to do that. He said, what you don't know, don't say. You know, I recall last Wednesday, it's about a week now, we're here and there were certain secrets the Lord was revealing to us in the class about heaven and a minister in our midst. Was <laughs> but do you know what he later said? He said, he said Uzi, I, I agree with what you said, but just that I don't know whether these people really understood what you were saying. I think she felt that we like was going yeah, to yeah. the young boy here that just baptized the young Christian. Yeah, yes. young Christian. So that's what his you know? was. See, that was his position. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, these ones are not afraid to slander celestial beings. There are divine truths about celestial beings that we want to talk about. Because you see, until you understand the ministry of angels, they cannot function for you as they should. Because understanding their ministry and who they are in terms of nature, how they are made up, 
how they function. If you do not, if you lack the understanding of that, you can never be conscious of them. The reason why people are conscious of demons is because of where they are coming from. They have an understanding of how demons operate. That's the reason for the consciousness of demonic forces, which results to fear. But if only you can be conscious of the ministry of angels. But before you do that, you need to know who they are. Then it will be your consciousness. That even though, like Sister Justine said in the play, he said, forget, keep going to New Jersey. There's no diversion to Baltimore, whatever. See? Why? There's a consciousness that she's a principality. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another consciousness that the Lord wants to reveal now. The consciousness of what? Angels. The angels will just be the one to paddle the plane and come and drop it. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, angels are not the spirits of dead men. Praise God. Now, one other thing about angels is that even though they are spirits, angels are spirits, really. They are spirits. Angels are what? Spirits. But they can take up human form. And the reason why they do that is so that they can appear to you, for you to see them. Because the human mind cannot see spirits. Cannot even feel spirits. Neither can understand spirits or perceive spirits. And that is the reason why these angels, that's why these angels can, can do what? Can appear, can take up human form. That's what we're trying to say. They can take up human form. Now, when you read Psalm 104, let's go to Psalm 104. Psalm 104. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalm 100 and what? Four. Interestingly, I like the way the NIV puts it, but the old King James says he make it his what? Angels, spirits, yes. verses 4. Psalm 104, verses 4. Are you there? Yes. Yes. Salida, where is your Bible? Okay, you share with this. He said he makes his angels what? Spirits. Spirit. Spirit. Say it again. He makes his angels what? Spirits. Spirit. Spirit. His ministers what? Amen. 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 My goodness. Mine is different. He makes one in his message. Don't worry, we'll talk. That's the NIV. Oh that's what I also have here. We'll come to that. That's even a beautiful expression. That's a beautiful expression. Please pay close attention, please. He said what? He's, he made his angels what? Spirits. Spirit. Please respond now. He made his angels what? Spirits. His ministers what? A flaming fire. Yeah. You are a flaming fire, sister Kathy. Yeah. And then there's somebody saying, I will deal with you, you say. You say, brother, I will roast you. You <laughs> said, I'm a flaming fire. You're not afraid. You're not afraid. You're not afraid. You said to him, I will roast you. <laughs> and why, why you are talking like that? You are coming close to the person. So that the person can feel the heat of your anointing. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> brother, and sister, anyone who is possessed, once they see you, they feel the heat. They know. They might be able to just manage themselves, to hold themselves. They can feel it. But sometimes it depends on how you increase your fire. Okay. If you increase your fire, it will, it will burn them so that they cannot stand again. Then they'll start, they start misbehaving. Mm -hmm. When you go and watch Imanet TV and see what is happening in synagogue church of all nations, you see what you see what is. You get to see it. We've had those kind of experiences before. Mm -hmm. You know? You know? I uh, see the little saw saw us and was shot. What? What is the matter? What are you doing? <laughs> he just laughs. He goes sit down. But he said he make it his what? Angels what? Spirits. Spirit. So angels are what? Spirits. Spirit. He said, but his ministers what? A flaming fire. My goodness. So say I'm a flaming fire. I am a flaming fire. Now do you know that our gathering here is a congress of fire? Yes. yes. It's a congress of what? Fire. fire. Because 
Evangelist Monica has a fire. Our dear sister Rebecca has a fire. Her daughter carries a fire. Amen. Every one of us. So even when a demon possessed person comes in here, this place cannot contain you. Amen. Because this is a complex of what? Fire. That's the reason why you are drinking so much uh, water. Water. <laughs> you can't quench it anyway. <laughs> How many of you want your choir fire quenched? Oh. How many of you want the fire to burn the wall? So the more you want, the more you drink water, right? Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Anyway, just teasing anyway. Yeah. Mm. Now look at the NIV. Something we want to bring up, bring up this. From the NIV we read, he said, he makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. Now he makes winds. W-I-N-D-S. The word winds there is from the Greek word numa. Numa. And numa means what? Wind. wind. P-N-E-U-M-A. P-N-E-U-M-A. Numa. The P is silent. Numa. Just like when you want to spell psychology, you still put what? P. Or you, the, the P is silent. Mm -hmm. This one is Numa. So Numa means what? Wind. Wind is what? Spirit. Please, let's be orderly. Let's be orderly. It's a class. Wind. W I N D. Now it says that he makes winds his ministers. Uh, sorry, his what? His messengers. Who are the messengers there? The angels. That's all. He said he's trying to tell us that the angels are what? Spirit. I like the way the NIV even puts it. And you know the interesting thing is that we are also the wind too. When you read John chapter three verses eight, he says Jesus was talking to Nicodemus. He said the wind blew it where it listed. He said that here the sound but cannot tell where it's coming from. He said and so is everyone that is born. Of the spirit. So the Numa, the spirit, called the wind, has also given birth to what? Wind. Say I'm a wind. I'm a wind. If only you know how God has glorified you. Say I'm a wind. I'm a wind. Now, brothers and sisters, if you are a wind, how come you are predictable? How come you have made yourself so predictable? That's why the enemy can plan for you. He knows you will fall, you will walk in the light of it. Don't be like that. Let's suppose you have an unbelieving husband. He begins to say, I know this is what, let me just set the trap for her so that he can find faults in you. Yeah. It is because you are not conscious of who you are. Even as you step into your home today, you say, I'm a wind. I'm a wind. I'm a wind. Ha. Say, say, I'm a wind. I'm a wind. My goodness. We are talking about angels, so we are moving into another. Dear God, let's come back. <laughs> say, I'm a wind. I'm a wind. Say it again. Say, I'm a wind. I'm a wind. Do you believe it? Yes. yes. So nothing should kill you in an accident. Yes. Say, I'm a wind. I'm a wind. So no miscarriage. Yes, yes. Say I'm a wind. I'm a wind. So no operation. Can you operate on a wind? No. no. So how come you are always going to the hospital? <laughs> Say I'm a wind. I'm a wind. Now can a wind swallow tablets? No. Where will the tablet go to? <laughs> you at least want to, before you leave home in the morning, you you have to swallow one tablet. Then you now come and say I'm a principality. You swallow one tablet. This is the app. You swallow one tablet. Vitamin. Vitamin. No matter what you call it, the only good is your vitamin. You are this one that eating tablet. <laughs> Look at you. You are trying to be cosmetic about it. That's why you are calling me vitamin. <laughs> Without that beautiful you. <laughs> You call it vitamin. You say, I'm supposed to look healthy. Amen. Praise God. Keep looking healthy. Who made this body? God. Oh. And he's telling you what you need. He says, oh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. He says, my son, give attention to my words. Incline thy ears unto my sayings. He said, keep them before your eyes. Let them not depart from the midst of your heart. Why? He said, because they are life unto those who find them. And what? And medicine. The Hebrew word is mape. Medicine to all their flesh. Medicine. 
Mape, M A R P E. With a small sign on, on the, in front of the E. Oh. Okay. Mape. The word mape means what? Medicine. Yes. God's word is the medicine, not the vitamin C. Yes. <laughs> oh, vitamin C. Um, you have become so used to drugs, eh? <laughs> so it's like the day you will not even take drugs, your body itself will be rioting. <laughs> your body will just be, eh? Hey, tablet, oh, tablet, oh, tablet, oh, tablet. Oh, tablet oh. Hey, who are you? <laughs> Why your body is rioting? You say, body, in the name of Jesus, comply. No tablet. Say, it's a body comply. No tablet. Ah, you tired? You swallow one thing. Are you a jazzist? Are you a, are you a native doctor? Only native doctors swallow things. <laughs> Think about it now. Imagine Jesus. I, imagine Jesus. Think about it. Imagine Jesus. You this beautiful you. Imagine Jesus. Jesus does, hey, Jesus does not wear perfume. Oh. He never wore perfume. You that wears perfume. You this beautiful you. Imagine Jesus carrying tablet. You see? <laughs> With which mouth? With that, even the tablet will be afraid to even will be afraid to even enter that mouth. Tablet. The tablet will say, Jesus, ah, you? No, I'm not entering. No, I refuse to be swallowed. Even the tablet will tell Jesus, ah, Jesus, you are very fine. What would the bo- what is that tablet coming to do? Have you not seen it? The more tablets you take, every tablet has a side effect. True of us. So why are you taking it? <laughs> You have become so conscious of tablets. Yes. And God wants you to be conscious of what? His word. Word. Angels. His word. Yes. Amen. Some people will say, the nephew of me called me and asked me whether his diabetes medicine is here. How much do you pay for the diabetes? It's amazing. <laughs> diabetes. Uh, my diabetes. My diabetes. I like that. How much do you, did you buy it? <laughs> How can you address it as what? My diabetes. Shame on the person. Mm-hmm. And that's even an adult. Oh. Mm-hmm. Imagine somebody's father behaving that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Please, let's go back to the That's another same one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But as the Lord leads, I hope we'll be able to finish this ministry of angels. So angels can take up human forms. So that they can make themselves visible for you to see. But angels are what? Spirits. But they can take up what? Human form. Let, let's see. Let's see what they look like when they take up human form. Would you like to see? Yeah. What yes, they look like? yes. Go to Daniel. Wow. Daniel chapter 9. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Brother, can I read for us? The Lord says you should read for us. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, verses 21 to 23. Please read for us. Um, Daniel chapter 9, verse 21 to 23. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yay. Oh, yeah. Wow, was that? Whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening. Um, Oblation. Okay, stop. Thank you. Now, the point we wanted to see there, there's a part we wanted you to see there, is in that verse 21. He said, he says, while I was still in prayer, Gabriel, who? Gabriel, the man. Please mark that word, the man. Gabriel the what? The man. The man. Even the man Gabriel. Okay. So your person has it that way. Even the man Gabriel, right? So he said, <coughs> Gabriel the man I had seen in the earlier vision came to me in what? In swift flight. <coughs> About the time of the evening sacrifice. Now the old PGM says oblation. Now, in a, a normal human being. An ordinary human being cannot take a swift flight. True of us. True. True. That's why it's the way I like that. That's why it's the way, right? Now, Gabriel, we know who Gabriel is. Gabriel is one of the archangels. But when he came, he came in form of what? A man. He had no wings. 
And you know the Bible says, do not hesitate to entertain strangers. It says, for some have entertained what? Angels unawares. Be nice to people. Some, some of you are just not nice to people. I don't mean here. Maybe. <laughs> but some people are just naturally not nice. And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. And you call yourself a Christian. The Bible says, do not hesitate. He said, don't hesitate. You, you are trying to be suspicious. Even when the person is even coming to rent an apartment in your house, you will probe him and probe him and probe him and probe him. And the person becomes tired and says, what is this, God? Okay, madam, I'm not staying again. Let me go. You have been believing God for tenants. For the past two years, now a tenant has come. You are probing, 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 probing. The Bible says, do not hesitate to entertain strangers. Mm-hmm. Even this tenant is coming to pay rent. It's not as if he's coming to live for free. Mm-hmm. All you need is to listen to the voice within you. He will tell you all you need to know about him. What if he keeps lying to you? All you need is to listen to who? The voice within you. That voice is the Holy Spirit. He will tell you everything you need to know about the person but how do you listen to the voice without knowing the word the bible says abraham was sitting under a tree he saw three men come he didn't know them he ran to them and said please come he invited them but he he didn't take them into the house why because he didn't know them but he he made them sit under a tree and went to prepare food for them to eat Mm -hmm. only for him to discover that it was even the very God Almighty Himself that came in form of a man with His two angels. God Almighty. Hmm. What many of many, many Christians do not know is that God always takes a stroll here on the face of the earth, and He comes in form of man. And believe me, He likes to be in the midst of His people. That's His desire. That's His delight. And He probably had paid you a visit. And you know, He doesn't even have to come wearing the best clothes. Go and read the story of 2 Kings chapter <coughs> 7 from verses 1. The Bible speaks of the four lepers. To this day, nobody know, knew them. Nobody knows anything about these four lepers. But these four lepers were the ones who brought abundance to Samaria. And that was the last we saw of them. And the intriguing thing about these four lepers is that they were always in agreement. Yes. Four lepers, always in agreement. <coughs> And the Bible says, as they walk to the Syrian camp, God amplified their footsteps. There must be something about these four lepers. They are not ordinary men. But they came like lepers. <laughs> so probably somebody has come to your home once for help. And looked destituted. Hopeless. But you chased the person away. Not knowing it was an angel of God you were chasing away. Think about it. Remember, Elijah visited a lady. And said, remember the Shunammite woman, right? Mm-hmm. Not if, is it the Shunammite woman now? Yes. No, yes. the widow of Zeriphath. Yes. And when he came, how did Elijah come? He wasn't wearing the best of clothes. He said, Madam, the ladies, he said, please, can you give me water to drink? The Bible says he met the woman at the gate of the city, fetching, fetching sticks to go and prepare food to eat for herself and her son to die. Then came Elijah. Elijah never lived in this. He was always living in the ask. He was always <laughs> very hairy, looking very unkept. That was how Elijah looked. <coughs> he looked very unkept. Not, I mean, not, not that he was dirty now, but his nature. And you know, to this very day, the Bible never mentioned who Elijah's parents were. The Bible only called him Elijah the Tishbite. Yes. So he came from a place called what? Teach bites. But nobody knew anything about his heritage. So Elijah was not an honorary person. Mm. Hey. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. you see, prophets are angels too. But we'll come to that. <coughs> Elijah came and said, Madam, please give me water to drink. Prophet, oh. Prophet Elijah. And Elijah was the reason why there was no water in that nation. He was the one who told Ahab, there will be no water for three and a half years. He himself became a victim to his prophecy. Be careful what you say with your mouth. This is your beautiful mouth that you put lipstick. Be careful what you say without your mouth. You think it's just for putting lipstick and eating McDonald's? Continue. To say, I know my right. I know my right. You know your right. 
Continue. You are telling your husband you know you're right. I don't know. <laughs> you are telling your husband you know you're right. After I make contribution in this house, I'll, I paid certificate. Continue. Continue. Is that how you want to leave it? Continue. And God is looking at you like, God said, okay, oh. even the angel would have sent to that home. <laughs> Let's send the angels over here. You think there were no rich people in that land who could have taken care of Elijah? But the Lord had to send Elijah to a widow. And there were many widows. But only one of them was Elijah sent to. Brothers and sisters, oh, everyone, every child of God has a prophet. It is whether or not you can recognize them. Amen. Sometimes they can come in bedroom slippers. The first time we were coming to the United States, we were sitting in the plane with a lady. And this lady saw us reading a book. The person we were to come to live with in America said, they said, the day we were to leave Nigeria for America, they said he went on a business trip. I finally discovered that it's a trick that people make, that they don't want people to come and live with them. And this was winter. It was January. It was cold. But God is merciful. Oh, yes. That was how this lady, this lady, assisted us. And to this day, this lady is a good friend to us. Amen. And through, through the gift of the Holy Ghost in at work in the life of Ozi, Ozi has been able to bless that family. Be of help to people. Because angels can come like what? Man. They can come like someone needing help. So that they can be a blessing to you. They can come like someone needing help. There's a sister who called us from Philadelphia. And she was telling us she owns a shipping company. Young lady owns a shipping company. She's doing well in her business. But she was to somebody gave her a number, and then she called us concerning marriage, that relationship, and nobody wants to marry her, that she's believing the Lord for a partner, this and that, that all the men that have been coming and going, they don't stay, they always leave. Then the Lord said, tell her that there is someone who comes to see her, but she always kick, kick him out. So we said, ma, there is a guy who comes to see you, the Lord said. You're always chasing me away. <laughs> you don't like to see his face at all. You don't like to see his face at all. Then the Lord, then we ask the sister, true of us. She said true. Sometimes she bangs the door at him. Get out, get out, I don't want to see. Get out. Then the Lord said, tell her, go and marry him. Oh. <laughs> what a what a what an instruction. <laughs> but you know, I was very safe because I, 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 I we were safe because it was a phone call. We were not safe face to face. I can imagine she would have just said, Are you okay? I mean she owns a shipping line. She owns a shipping company. That kind of person. What does the brother what can the brother give to a lady who owns a shipping company? Is it a recharge card you want to buy? You can't buy a recharge card. <laughs> she's believing God for an answer, whereas the answer comes by the door as she's chasing him away. And she's growing, she, and she was telling us on the phone she's not getting any younger. If God knows you were not getting any younger, he sent you a brother. You, you, every, you will bang the door. Get out, I don't want to see you. Then the Lord said, tell her to be nice to him. Then the Lord said, tell her something she does not know. So we asked the Lord, what should we tell her? Then the Lord said, tell her there is a king in him. Wow. So we told her, there is a king in that guy. Marry him. Wow. You see, good gifts may come in rough packages yes. sometimes. Yes. You want to marry a ready-made. I, I, I was in a, we were in Abuja some years ago. <laughs> and we visited a church. And the pastor was preaching. A female pastor. He said, some of you want to marry a man who already has a car, who has everything, who already has a house, and all that. Then guess what she said? She said, don't forget, the car came to the house before you. Yeah. So you might live before the car. Yeah. 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 The car came before the house. I have never forgotten that statement. In Abuja. Wow. 
Don't be like that. After all, you never made any man. You never created anybody. And now you look at someone and say it's not good enough for you. You. You talk that way from your own mouth. You say, but I have to see my mind now. If I see, <laughs> see, brother and sister, let's tell you one truth. The Bible never says you should marry somebody you love. It is the deceit of Satan. The Bible never says you should marry somebody you love. Thank you. The Bible never says you should marry somebody you love. Give us ten minutes more, okay. so that we can close. So we, we couldn't go for. But I hope you learned something. Yes. yes. <laughs> we'll continue. Yeah. The Bible never said you should marry somebody you what? You love. Know. The Bible said, husband, love, love your wife. wife. So that means she's already a wife. So you, he actually married somebody he did not love. So he said, husband, love her. So the Bible never said you should marry somebody you love. Don't get fooled by this Western concept. Because God is not civilized though. God is not modern. God is not an American. <laughs> this is how is happy. She said, hmm. she's smoking. God is not civilized though. <laughs> see, 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 settle. When you say you wanted to serve God, are you sure you were honest about it? When you say Jesus is Lord of my life, are you sure you were honest about it? Because Jesus will tell you to do things. <laughs> that will, eh, we sang I surrender a while ago, right? Are you sure when you were singing that song you meant it or you were just trying to be emotional about it? <laughs> Don't be a mongrel. Oh. Don't be a mongrel acting that way. When you say you want to serve God, are you sure you were honest about it? Yes. Because the Lord will tell you to do certain things that will. Isn't it not amazing? The Lord told the prophet Hosea to go and marry a prostitute. God yes. told the prophet. Yes. God told the prophet yes. Hosea. Yes. Hosea, in the whole of Israel, only Hosea was the righteous man yes. wanting to serve the Lord, to follow God wholeheartedly. God said, Okay, fine. Go and marry a prostitute. Yes. What a gift the Lord gave a prophet. And Hosea went to marry a prophet. I'm telling you, I celebrate the grace of Hosea. God bless him for who he is. Hosea has a different calling. <laughs> we, we, bless, we bless Hosea. But, but the Lord is trying to show us pattern. <laughs> Hosea. Hosea. Was he Isaiah? There was another prophet. Was he Isaiah? The Lord said he should prophesy for all over the nation Israel naked. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. God said he should not wear clothes. <laughs> hey prophet my goodness yeah. you that say oh god use me use me are you sure you are sincere about this oh god god use me for your glory i want to be like ah, god use me the way you are using osi okay you don't know what osi has seen though. Amen. <laughs> i want my child to be like osi ah, are you sure do you know what osi has done before do you know who was he is? God told the prophet to be prophesying naked for three years. Three years, not three days, oh. Three years. God was telling me where to come to, to stay. To be prophesying. My goodness. What a modeling show. In fact, <laughs> You see, God is not God never see this is the this is the beauty. See, you need to understand God is not civilized though. He's not modern. He's not see, we are not telling you this to run away from him now. That's not why we're telling you. <laughs> because in God there is safety. The reason why we see that was the experience God had with Eli um, Jeremiah. That was his destiny for his call. But yours may be different, right? Yes. And it, it's beautiful. Amen. Amen. After all, Jesus did not walk naked. Yes. Right? So he, obviously that cannot be your lot, right? Yes. But then the same Bible, Ephesians chapter 5. It says, wives, submit to your own husbands. The Lord never told the women to love the husbands. The Lord said, submit. Submit. <laughs> But men. Oh, maybe you think we are lying. Go to Ephesians. Because God, God knows you're asking a question. You say, How did the Lord come about that, right? Yes. yes. Because of what he did. Because he can make a man hate a woman. But God says, Man, love her. 
Just a lover. Yeah. Because God knows the woman will be full of flaws. He says, Lover. Yeah. Sister, just read it to us, please. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Yes, go ahead, man. Say, Husbands, love your wife, okay. even as Christ. Start from verse 22, <laughs> Sister, just see. Your, your focus is on the husband's now. Let's go. You know that the husband already loves you. Go to, oh, yeah. go to verse 22, please. <laughs> Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband. What did he say? Own, own, own husband. husband. Now, how come you have some women today who submit their God? We are supposed to teach angels who. Ah, the Lord is together taking us to the We'll continue back. It says, wives, now, submit to your what? Own husband. Own what? He didn't say you should submit to your father in law. Submit to your who? Own husband. He didn't say you should submit to your elder brother. Submit to your what? Own husband. He didn't say you should submit to your mother. He didn't say you should submit to your husband's brother. He said submit to your what? Own husband. Because you, you married him. Continue. For the husband is the head of the wife. He said the husband is the head of what? The, the wife. He didn't say he's the head of the woman. No. Can you see that? He says he's the head of what? The, the wife. wife. So, that your husband is still... A, that... <laughs> That you have a boyfriend doesn't mean he's your head. <laughs> Alright? No. But who is your head? My husband. Now, that you have a baby father doesn't mean he's your head. Because he's not, he's not what? Your he's not your husband. <laughs> he said your husband is what? My husband. Your husband is your husband. Yes, it's like your sin. But he says your husband is what? He's the head. Yeah, he's the head. Go ahead. Alright, go ahead. Then, <laughs> it's <not> just... <laughs> <laughs> your husband is your husband. I'm telling you, Sister Justine, you are not wrong. You are claiming what belongs to you. Oh, yeah. Amen. Praise God. So you go and claim your own. Continue. Continue. Praise Even God. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Okay. And he is the savior of the body. All right. So your husband is your savior. Mm -hmm. Your husband. Just like Christ is the savior of the church, your husband is your own savior. Because he came to save you. That's what it means by marrying you. He married you out of your family. Yes. He came to save you. Yes. Ah, that is you did a good job. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And for many, many, many wives here with their husbands. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right, go ahead now. Yeah. <laughs> My daughter is sitting here that yeah. I want to be saved. Amen. You want to be saved, right? You want, amen. You will be saved by your husband. Too. Say amen. 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 Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, I read that Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Did you see that? He said in every what? Yes. Thing. Every word. Every word. Everything. So when the husband says, Madam, please, how much do you have in your purse? <laughs> Submit. <laughs> God is not civilized, though. He's a brother, see that? God is not an activist, so God does not do human rights, so. though. Brothers and sisters, please don't get offended. She doesn't no, this, this is a Benedict. She has a peculiar ministry. This is a <laughs> Praise God. All right. But, but he says, he says <laughs> you know, you people are too civilized. You see, that's the trouble. You see why God said, My children are destroyed. For, see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Let's tell you something. If Christians will make up their minds to say, Lord, I am ready to do anything that you say that I should do in line with your word. You will have a peaceful life. I'm telling you, you will find that the people will be saying, um, do you have social security? You will not have any need for that because the Lord, just because you are obedient to his word, he, he provides everything. If, I always say, back home in Nigeria, we used to tell people, particularly ladies, a woman, a lady who is not faithful to the things of God can never marry a faithful man. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. <laughs> it's not possible. He said it now. He said, whatsoever a man so, so it shall what? So why should, God, why should God give you a faithful man when you are not even faithful to his work? So his own child that is faithful to his things, you want him to now carry that child and give, he will, he will look for another faithful lady. <laughs> And is everybody selfish too? You won't. So that you went to church to say you want to look for a husband. No, be careful what you will get. 
Even though the brother has been in church for years, be careful what you will get. Be careful what you will get. Praise God. Now, go ahead, Sister Justine. Let's just end with husbands, that. Husbands, now. Love your wife. Love your what? Even as Christ. Wait, it, husband, do what? Love, love your, your wives. Even as Christ did what? Love the, love the church. And did what? And he gave he gave so a husband should give himself for his wife. So why are you complaining? Just because your wife's car stopped on the highway and she called you, you were in your office. Why should you be angry? Give yourself for her. That's what marriage is all about. You see, with this understanding now, telling us that Jesus himself gave himself for the church, you are now beginning to see, for those who were in that last Saturday's class, that marriage is not between a man and a woman. It is between what? Male and female. It is spiritual. Praise God. Have you learned anything tonight? Yes. Say thank you, Holy thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We started on the truth about she angels. Has God made you people, no one will be Praise God. Praise God. Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Tell us what you learned today. Let's hear from you. Okay, on the angels' part, stand up. Yeah. Uh, on the angels' part, I know that no angel could be anybody you know from the past that died or anything. Um, there's more angels than demons because God, yeah, yeah He wants it that way because He doesn't have any more um, <laughs> what else? Uh, there's more. Well, on the marriage part too, we just learned that the woman, that the husband is the savior of the wife, not necessarily the woman, just the wife. Mm. And um, you like that fast. <laughs> <laughs> you also want to come and save me from your mother, have you? <laughs> she said yes. Ah. <laughs> so you want to watch to come and save you <laughs> from your mother? Okay. Praise God. Is that Rebecca is a wonderful mother? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. You know, we 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 are just teasing anyway. Sister Linda, tell us what did you learn? Oh, I actually have a question. Okay, go ahead. Let's ask your questions. She says she asks questions. About what you guys learned last week, Saturday, yes. about male and female. female. So, like, so a sixteen-year-old girl could marry because she's a male. I mean, female no. are male. What? It, it is possible, yes. But you see, the point is this: it's not about age, right? That's what you're trying to drive at, right? It's not about age. Yeah, really After all, we were not told the age of Eve. No. Neither were we told the age of what? Adam. 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 All right. So you are not wrong in that sense. But you see, the thing is this: even when adults, we live in a society where even adults are behaving like children. Mm. All right. So is there hope for even a sixteen-year-old child? We have some mature. We have some matured ones. Good. Now the question is this: what is the quality of the word of God in the life of a sixteen-year-old child? Mm. The fortitude of the word. That's what you have to look at too. And, and then also, the person who is even... The thing is not even about the lady now. It's even about the man that wants to marry this lady. What is the fortitude of the word of God in your spirit? Because you see, obviously the lady is going to learn from, from you, the man. Mm -hmm. You get it? So it's not about the age thing. But go ahead. But, you know, we have some mature men that went and married because... They want to get off, um, get out of their parents' house. Yes, they don't I, have the word. Some of them are very ignorant. They it, only know the word. Is it that, those are the kind of people you should not even near at all, <laughs> because they will use your life to do trial and error. They will use your, they will, they will use your life to do test running. Yeah, let, me try let me try and see. And that's the reason for several. You find a man, he's married three times, or a man is married twice. Mm -hmm. Now there are peculiar cases, anyway. Okay, where the lady could be unreasonable. But didn't you know this before? Okay, sir, so maybe I didn't know. Maybe the man didn't know the things of God. But it, it, it's something now as a child of God. Haven't come into the kingdom. Let's even leave those who are not born again. You as a child of God. Haven't come into this kingdom. First of all, define it. What kind of life do you want for yourself? First? Because the kind of life that you define for yourself will determine the kind of man you will attract. The kind of life you define for yourself. Because you see, for instance, now let's say OC. Now OC is in ministry, right? 
and the Lord has a special call for Ozzy. Now, even though Ozzy sees many ladies, Ozzy cannot just marry any person. No matter how, they, how, how close they are, yeah. Ozzy cannot just say, I want to marry him. Because that lady can either make the ministry move forward or destroy it. <laughs> so, so, you see, when you look at the future, because, you see, the person you marry is a reflection of the kind of future you have defined for yourself. Yes. The person you marry. I want to marry. Oh, yeah. So, who do you want to marry? I want to marry this sister. Just by looking at the sister, we already tell the kind of future you have designed. So, we can say, brother, are you sure you are very well? <laughs> okay. Let's discuss this matter. Or oh, his sister says, I want to marry this brother. <laughs> the brother you chose, this is their sister. She came, she, she has attended this Bible class, I guess, once or maybe twice. She, she told us about her daughter here in America. Who wants to marry a brother? One guy from New York. And this is even the, the interesting part of the, of, the, of the whole thing. When she came to me after the Bible class, she said, please pray with us. Uh, my daughter wants to marry. Mm -hmm. And the guy is coming. We are getting to know him. So she said, I want you to pray. Whether he's the right man or not. So we said to her, there's no point to pray. So you see him first. Mm -hmm. What are we going to pray about? Of course, we know. They are saying, the Lord was already talking. But we just couldn't tell her because she would not believe. So that she, the daughter would not be saying, Mommy, you have not even seen him. You just chased the man away. And you are the one. You don't wish me well. So we said, Mother, see the brother. Let the brother come. So she said, so we said to her, after the guy comes, then you can call us. Then we'll pray. But you will see some things about that guy. Find out which church he goes to. Let's even begin with that. You know what happened? This sister called us. I think a week or two weeks, or maybe a few days. It'll be, I think it will be safe for us to use the word few days. That's how this sister called us. She called us on the phone and said, she called me my brother. She said, my brother, it is true. I said, what happened? What is true? <laughs> she said, the guy came home that wants to marry my daughter. You know, when women start talking like that, you know that there's a matter that wants to marry my daughter. <laughs> she didn't even say, <laughs> she didn't say my pictures are exactly. She said, <laughs> she said, I wants to marry my daughter. So what is it about this one? She said, can you imagine? I was asking him which church he goes to. He was telling me, I don't have a particular church that I go to. I can go to anyone, anywhere they invite me. I'm just liberal. Even I can go to a mosque. I said, eh? She said, a mosque? She said, even if they invite me to the mosque, because he's liberal. Wow. She said, she just said to the guy, brother, <laughs> whether he was drinking wine or whatever, brother, what well done. Finish drinking. I need to me again. And the daughter was coming. Mommy, I, I love him. I love him. The mother said, love what? <laughs> love what? <laughs> love what? What do you love? <laughs> you love Libra or what? What do you love? <laughs> is it Libra or Libra you love? Libra. <laughs> you see, that is the deception. Thank God she was smart enough. A guy who is that unstable to say he can't go anywhere they invite him. Let's even suppose he says he does not even go to mosque. Let's even say he, he, he said, I go to any church that invites me. That's even the more reason you should never marry him. Exactly. James chapter 1 verses 8 says what? A double-minded man is what? A unstable in all his ways. Uh -huh. That kind of person. And the daughter is saying, I love him. <laughs> love him. You see, let me tell you something. There are certain things that give impression. I don't mean to be critical about people who wear tattoo, but a guy who crested his whole body with tattoo says he wants to come and marry your daughter. Oh, <laughs> you, and he says even if, even though he speaks his dog, oh, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> no, but, but, but sometimes, yes. but sometimes they really had the tattoo before the. Yeah, that's true. Scene. That's true. You are not wrong. You are not wrong, Sister Linda. You are very correct. You are not wrong. I agree with you. You know, but we're saying that it, it, impressions. That's what we're just saying. There's nothing wrong with that, really. I was, we were just teasing when we said that. Tattoo? <laughs> At least if the guy is smart and he knows that his mother, mother-in-law does not, his prospective mother-in-law does not like tattoos, you wear shirts that will cover every... <laughs> for that particular time. But you must be honest too that he's a good guy. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God.
Praise God. Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Do you still have any question? Yeah, I do. Okay, go ahead. With the submission and the love part when mm. it comes to um, husband and wife. Yeah. Hey. There are certain times that um, husbands yes. will love their wife. Yes. It's like, it's kind of like some by force love. By uh, force love, Avi. Hey. Lalinda, you're very experienced, though. You have a very experienced. You let, 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 yeah, yeah, you see how sometimes the man will overlove the wife. It's getting closer. Overlove? And, yeah, <laughs> so and, and maybe the wife don't like that. There are yes, certain men that yes, love true. their wife to true. certain stage true. and their wife feel really true. more comfortable than they feel. True. They start insulting them and stuff like that. Yeah. And they take advantage of the man. Yeah. So, what is the question now? The question, so, how do you handle that? So, so in this case, I mean, to, to my perspective, I thought in marriage it has to be like vice versa, actually. How do you mean? In terms of, I love you, you love you. 50 mm-hmm. 50, right? Yeah. 50 50 love, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's Luther Vandross' uh, concept. <laughs> you understand? You see, you see, again, God is not civilized. God said, man, love this woman. Whether she does not com- whether she's comfortable about it or she's not, brother, just keep loving. That is your calling, you know, just keep loving. You understand? But then, yes, Sister Linda also made the point there where the lady also should give back, right? Well, what the Lord even said the lady should give back is even submission. But if you look at it very well, if a lady is submissive to a man, it means that she also loves the person too. Because the more you submit, the more you, you love. The man, but you see, the way the man treats the woman will determine whether the woman will be submitted to to to, to him. You get you get what I'm saying. But you see, the thing is this: you don't define, you don't boils down to the definition of your future. The definition of your future. You as a man, what kind of future do you want? It will determine the kind of lady you want to marry. You know, there are some ladies who want. Who want the head of Lucas on the shoulder of Leke, on the legs of Christe, on the toes of, on the fingers of Pipi? <laughs> you understand? Know, Do you know what we mean by that? No. no, no, no. no. She has had several boyfriends. <laughs> These are Luke, the boyfriends Lucas, okay. Biodu, Leke. <laughs> call her, call him. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. Yeah. Richard. Chukwa Emeka. Chukwa Emeka. <laughs> and, eh? and OC. Okay. And then, and then, and then, and then guess what? She had these experiences. She's not married to any of them. Yes. Now she wants to marry. There's a part in Kevin that she likes. She, she likes Kevin's nose. She wants, she said, I like my husband to have this Kevin's nose. Even though things do not work out with Kevin. <laughs> but she likes Kevin's fingers. <laughs> Kevin's arms. arms. She likes which other person? Chukwu Emeka's hands. And his chest because he has a V chest. <laughs> then she likes Peter's the way Peter talk. <laughs> He's gifted with talk. Gab. Now brothers and sisters, as funny as this look, there are many ladies who are still living in that dream. Yes. Now, what the Bishop TDJ said for that kind of lady, she will produce a monster. Mm-hmm. Because already that, that's Frankenstein. The head of Kevin with the nose of Lucy. I mean, the same thing too for the men too. There are some men who want to marry. Uh, I, I recall Dr. Crepodola was teaching one day. He said when he was before he got married, he was always praying to God. He said, God, I want to marry a woman who loves you more than she loves me. So that I can be very safe. <laughs> Let her love you more than she loves me and then he said god you know what i like in a woman you know i like legs Legs. straight legs i like straight legs (laughs) then people started laughing he said whatever dude i like legs he said so how did he meet his wife they were in a prayer meeting he was the fellowship coordinator and as we were praying the lord said open your eyes and she was sitting over (laughs) and she was wearing tight so the lord said look at her he said the first thing he saw was her legs. The legs. And he said the next thing he said, Hold on, I rebuke you, Satan. Get it behind me, get it behind me, get it behind me. Get it behind me. Get it behind me. Thank you, Jesus. Then, 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 then the Spirit of God said to him, Shut up. You said you like legs. I'm showing you now. He said he closed his eyes. Then they were all praying. The lady was busy praying to closing her eyes. Then the Lord said, Look up. He looked at her again. 
He said, get up, Alamaru. They, they didn't know. They didn't know the reason why he was shouting in tongues was because he was trying to shut, shut down the voice. Yes. They, they might think they were thinking he was really in the spirit. Yes. So be careful. The next time you hear somebody shouting, in the spirit, be careful what he has seen. That's making him shout. He said, but at the end of the day, he's married to her. He said, but when they got married, this is the part, this is the funny part. He said, when they got married, he said, anytime he goes out and comes back to come and tell the lady how he struggled, how he went through difficulty in the day to achieve success. He said, instead of, they said, guess what he will hear from the wife? She was standing next to him as he was preaching. They were discussing relationship. He said, <laughs> he said, instead of his wife, he looked at her. She was standing next to him. He said, instead of the wife to say, oh, you know, encourage him, console him, you know. He said, the wife will say, yeah, dude, with your big head, even though you had listened to the voice of the Lord, you wouldn't have made that mistake. He said, he will look at the wife and say, that is not what I'm expecting you to tell me. I'm expecting you to tell me, it's okay, you know, take it easy. Then the wife said to him, then I shouldn't, I probably was not the person you should have married. Okay. He, said, he said, he went to complain to the Lord. And then the Lord said, remember you said you wanted somebody who loves me, who loves me. Mother, so she loves me, so she's using the word to correct you. He said, but Lord, that is not what I expect her to tell me. <laughs> so be careful what you ask God for, he will give it to you. <laughs> ask. Okay. Let's, uh, let's take our last question. Okay, let's take our last question, then we'll take um, Actually, about relationship. Yes. Right? I know some Christians or... Um... Let's give our offerings. Okay, hold on. Let her finish. So then we'll... some, some Christians when they see you like dating before marriage, they, they kind of start judging you and stuff like that. Come again. Like some Christians, when they, they see you dating before marriage, they start judging you or something like that. Is it bad? Is it, is it bad? Now, yes. good question. Good question. Thank you, Zalinda, for bringing this up. You see, it's dating, going out with each other, uh, and probably even cutting. Before you marry the person, getting to know the person. Let's use that word. Now, now, do you know? You see why God is not civilized? There's no such thing. That's right. There's no in the Bible. It, those things are human concepts. They say get to know her. Even they, they don't even use dating. Even each other use the word cut, cut out for a while. It's not in the Bible. Thank you. He said, "Either find it, you were the one that went to look for. All you need, you see, this is the point. That is why God. You see, people who talk that way, dating, cutting, they have not fed themselves with the word of God, and they are not conscious. See, they, there is no relationship with the Holy Spirit. Paul says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the what? The fellowship of the Holy Spirit." If you can listen to the Holy Spirit, He will tell you everything you need to know about this woman. Oh. Have you not seen? You courted this lady for years. You married her. After a while, she still man man manifested. He's not by knowing. How, how, how long will it take you to know someone? It is the voice of the Spirit who will tell you everything. Yes, you may like someone. And both of you can just be friends. Yes. Okay, you can say, let's be friends, Abby. You get to be friends. And then the guy says, I'd like to marry you or so, whatever. So that he may not be too direct because he doesn't want to lose you. So he says, okay. But you see, it all begins, okay, but let's even suppose you are dating the person. What happens in the process, in the process of that friendship, yes. right? We even determine whether he's the right person to be married to. Mm -hmm. You understand? For instance, if you, if you are with a guy, even though both of you are dating and he's a kind of he's a touchy person mm -hmm. he's a touchy person that's not this that's not even that should even disqualify him mm -hmm. and the person he tells you oh sorry that's the way i am ah if he tells you that's the way yeah if that's even the reason why he should run away you know why because by the time he marries you he will see another lady he will still be acting that way too mm -hmm. what do you mean and that's the way i am i'm a very touchy person and they say oh okay don't mind him you know he's a kind he's kind of touchy you overlook those things. no uh -huh. that you see because you see it's a life thing and you don't, you don't want to do it twice. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do it twice. Mm -hmm. Listening to the voice of God's spirit within you is your safety. Mm -hmm. All right? Sister Linda, I want to ask you a question. Although, yes, we know there are some people who dated and they're still married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then, what is God's word saying about it? After all, Joseph did not date Mary. <laughs> Abi, he only engaged Mary. In fact, I believe the cutting even begins after the engagement. 
So now that's. No. Go ahead, go ahead. So people should not cut. The Bible never said a thing like that. Mm -hmm. You know, at least let's do it God's way, Abby. So that we can be safe. What do you think, Sister Pigeon? Let's do it God's way, Abby. Yes. So that we can be safe. Yes. Okay. So when it is time for. And interestingly, if a man, Sister Lila, come, you must hear this too. Okay. If a man wants to marry a lady, we said it in last Saturday's class, this is the ideal order. He doesn't go straight to the lady. He goes straight to the person to whom that lady is under authority. Either her pastor or maybe her father. It is that person that will tell you everything you need to know about that lady. Then from the things you have heard from this person, you'll be able to make your choices. It will help you know how to pray. Whether this person is still the right person to marry for your future. Because the things that you heard, look at it and reconcile it with the future that you want. Does this person fit in? If not, quietly walk away. You didn't miss anything. You didn't lose anything. After all, you never had a contact with her. So when you see some ladies who say, eh, somebody, I can't believe this man did this thing to me. We, we were supposed to get married, then later he changed his mind. You are, you are just funny. You are funny. Ha, what happened? He came to you, Abby. Yes, he wasn't even supposed to come to you. It is, and the reason why he, he, he wasn't even supposed to come to you was that the God's original plan is that you are under authority. We just read it. And so because you say, but, but my parents are not here, my mother is not here. How about your pastor? My pastor doesn't know me. That's the reason why nobody should marry you. That your pastor doesn't even know you. You mean nobody knows you in church? Ha. That means you are... You are... You are... You are, you are Libra. Yeah. That means there must be something suspicious about you. Okay. That the first is you. Before Brian Franklin. Yeah. My question is... Said that it's always good to go and marry and find out. Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Uh, the pastor who was here on Wednesday, yes, sir. Man said you can be so spirited, anointed, but if you're not careful, you will go and marry a demon. True, mm -hmm. true. He's not wrong. You see? That's true. Oh, so yeah, you can marry a that depends is continue. Because you can see some pastors who are. Anointed by their wives are dealing with true, true, yes. true. Yeah. You are not wrong. Yeah. Yes, yes. How come things happen like that? Okay, fine. Now, first of all, you see, before those kind of things happen to God's children, before those kind of things happen to God's children, it is because of. Please listen carefully. Please listen carefully. It is because of disobedience. When you read Ephesians chapter two, when you read verses two to three. He talked about the prince of the power of the air that walketh in the children of all disobedience. So, as a child of God, you have been one time disobedient. So you don't need. You know the Bible says there is a there, there is a way that what cement right unto a man, but at the end there are what ways of death. Now this is this is it. For a minister of God to marry the wrong woman means that that minister of God was not even under authority. Because he must have a spiritual coverage, maybe like a spiritual father. Somebody he can open up his heart to and say, sir, I like this lady. Because you see, as a spiritual authority, there are things you see that, uh, that you, as a young minister, may not see. You understand? Mm -hmm. There are things you see. For instance, now, even ideally, if you even wants to marry now, we can say, oh, Daddy Francis, come. There's a lady I see. Let's talk. Tell me about this. What do you think? You see, when you seek counsel, because you see, the same spirit of God that is within Ozzy is also within him too. Mm -hmm. And concerning this kind of matter, Ozzy may be prone to becoming selfish, mm -hmm. where he can become blind to his own opinion. That is why there is a need for Ozzy to share it with someone who is even elderly to say, give me counsel. Because you see, the person will not be seeing it from Ozzy's perspective now, he will be seeing it from an independent perspective. Mm -hmm. With the influence of God's spirit, without any sentiment to say, I don't think you should mind this person. You see that? So when you sign a minister who makes that kind of blunder, it means that he was not submissive. And he, and funny enough, for those kind of ministers, they themselves know, they do know, that if they take it to their spiritual father to go out, or their spiritual authority to discuss it with, they will not approve of it. They themselves know. They themselves know. They know. 
that if I go and talk to my spiritual father about it, he will not agree. There's a pastor in New York. I call him my spiritual father because you know we're in New York. Yeah. Elderly person, full of wisdom. But do you know sometimes, even in my, well, even in our own apartment, it's not as if he lives with us. Oh. He lives very far. But because of the consciousness that I know I have somebody that I see as a spiritual father, even where I am, I'm even careful the way I behave. Why? You know why? Because I know also I'll still be the one to go and report myself when we talk. I'll say, Pastor, do you know what I did? I did something yesterday. This one, he will laugh. He will say, no problem. You know, it's a good thing that I would do. Then he will say, this is it, this is it, this is it. Okay, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. And sometimes he himself, when he wants to take certain steps, he will call. He will say, what is the Spirit of God? He knows, he he hears clearly from the Spirit. So he says, what is the Spirit of God saying concerning this, 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 this? I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this. We we'll talk. We talk. So some of the things that we are probably not even shared with you guys, we have shared with him. He said, Pastor, give me counsel here on this matter. This is it, this is it, this is it. We talk. See, constant relationship with the person you see as a spiritual authority. You know? Rosie, sorry. Does that have anything to do with my forcing prophecy? No, 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 no. That's witchcraft. When you force prophecy, oh. don't say the Lord. You should marry Lucy. That's witchcraft. That's the pastor. Oh, it's like what did the God say about this? No, 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 no. He calls to say, I want to do this thing. What is the voice of God's spirit saying about this? Most of the time, I'll say, let's pray. But you see, God has been so good to us. Because why? Even while we're talking, the Lord is talking. Sometimes I tell people. So we tell people, be careful what you say to Rosie. He's listening. I mean, God loves Rosie that much. Amen. He talks to Rosie freely. Amen. Freely. He's not by fasting and prayer. No, he just loves Rosie to talk to Rosie freely. Amen. You understand? So he himself is very conscious. He will say, well, I, What is the Spirit of God saying concerning this, this, this? So sometimes we can just be talking. And if, if the Spirit of God is not saying anything, we can keep quiet. Sometimes, now this is another funny thing that happens. Sometimes I may say, Pastor, this is what I think. From, at least from the word of God. Because you see, it is not a, you don't know everything in the world. Mm. At that point, the spirit of God will not talk. But I'll say, Pastor, let's look at the Bible says this, this, this. Let's not do this. Let's not do that. Let's not do this. He he's 65, but he wants to, he, there's this lady in his church he liked. He, he was saying, I, like, I said, Pastor, we know you like this lady. <laughs> <laughs> he's not married. He was he was not married. He was not married. To this day, he's not married yet. Hmm. But he's 65. So he said he likes this lady. This lady is in her 30s. So he likes, they are always together. And she's a member of his church. So he said, Who's he bought? Um, so he said, Pastor, talk to her. They are always together. Always together. She knows she comes to see him, assist him, do things. You know. So, so I said, Pastor, tell her. Tell her you like her. There's nothing wrong with that. He said, I'm careful not to say a word because I, I don't know how to see him because she's a member of our church and she might feel uh, taking advantage and all that. You know, and I said, Pastor, there, but for me, there's nothing wrong. Just tell her sister, I like you. I'm telling you, I like you. I want to marry you. But here's the point. Do you know other ministers of God? Other ministers of God. Each time they visit that church, they will see that leader. See, they will be saying the same thing to her. See, Pastor Henry. And Pastor Henry will just be quiet. <laughs> now, the point is this: there is a notion that the lady has that probably Pastor Henry is discussing. How with those men, so that they can put pressure on her. Mm. You understand? Mm. I said there is a notion, but but you know, at the end of the day, I think Pastor Harry, whether he he was having a discussion with her, and she she reacted in a certain way. Oh, I think Pastor Harry said to her, "I like the you look very good with your dress." Then she said to Pastor, "I don't have to dress this way to look good. At least I've been dressing. You know, that was like an insult to mm. Pastor Harry. Right. So Pastor, that, because of that, Pastor Harry just." So when he told us about that, we felt bad and said, ah, what is wrong with this lady? <laughs> we don't expect her to talk this way. And so Pastor Eddie said, let's leave it. Let her just still be a member. Let's be members. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sometimes some people can, you see, destinies. It could be in our destiny mm -hmm. she was supposed to marry Pastor Henry. Mm -hmm. It's possible. Mm -hmm. But you see, you are the one to determine it. It's up to you. But the Lord can make, give you counsel and say, there's nothing wrong. Do you know how old? Do you know how old? Yeah. All right. So, do you know how old Joseph was to Mary? Mm -hmm. It's not about age. It's not about age. 
<laughs> okay, let's take Brother Franklin's question. I have a question. Okay, go ahead, sir. <laughs> Please, let's listen. Let's speak on. My question is for example, if a man of God yes, sir. should make a mistake of marrying somebody like a devil, mm. he's married already. There's nothing. He's married. Yeah. Does that affect his ministry? Of course, yes, it will. It will affect his ministry because you see, if there is no stability in his spirit, in his marriage, he cannot minister well to God's people. That will actually affect his work in ministry. And it shouldn't be, really. And, and interestingly, in the book of Leviticus chapter 21, the Bible says, hmm. the Bible says, a minister, a Levite, should not marry a woman who is divorced or a woman who has had something to do with a man. As a matter of fact, Levites, Levites are priests, right? Ministers. They are supposed to marry virgins. They are not supposed to marry any woman that has been tempered with. But today you have a pastor who married a divorced woman or married a lady who has gallivanted, groomed. <laughs> of course, yeah, we say if every, if every man being in Christ is a new creature. True, true. Maybe on that revelation, that's why you are functioning. You see why God is not civilized? Yes, You see now? Yes, God is not civilized. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. I wanted to ask something about okay. angel. Angel, go yes. ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Back to the class. Uh, yes. <laughs> Before we are frantic. Since an angel can come in form of a human being, mm. and if an angel walks in, and if, can the angel accept like a gift? Yes, or, they eat. Uh, thank you. Because they eat. while you are saying this, I remember a couple of years ago, we were having like a convention in the church, and somebody from nowhere, you know, we are listening to the preaching, it was a big convention and you know this man looked like a mad person with beers and everything we don't know where he came from he walked in straight to the church even me i don't have to lie i was scared i was even looking for an exit to <laughs> <laughs> if he gets to that chester but eventually I, I noticed it's an angel you know so when he came in some of the ushers tried to offer him something but he did he said he just did the sounds like this we are all looking at him, you know. So I said, okay, when we offered him this, is it that angels don't eat? No, the angels eat. Because when he left, we didn't know. No, it is a when choice. I sat at the back chair, you never can. When he left, nobody knew where you never he can left. tell the instruction the Lord gave him. Mm. Yes. You understand? Okay. So yes. Yes. Maybe he has visited somebody and eating them. No, not necessarily. <laughs> not necessarily. You know, um, God <laughs> sends you a. He can send an angel. For a definite mission, okay. and in the instruction, if they are not told to eat, they will not eat. Okay. But of course, they, they have the right to make to take initiative. We'll come to that maybe next week when we we'll look at all. We just started the introductory part of okay. the ministry of angels, the truth about angels. But I'm asking, ask your question. Okay, uh, my question is it's not a question, but it's a feeling that I'm putting to you. Okay. That uh, for Christ's sake. You know, marriage is something that, for example, if my house is burning with fire, I mean, my marriage is not good. And but also, you are expecting me to come and sit down and listen to you or do something in God's, God's house. To be honest with you, I can't do it. Yeah. This is what is killing most of yes. church distance, uh, yeah. our members. So, yeah. on behalf of this class, please, let's do the part two again. Of the marriage? Yeah, let's do part two. To, to the time that God will say, you know, okay. I know God loves marriage. Yes. God's eyes is on no, marriage. No, you see, God, God desires marriage. That's what he's looking forward to, even in heaven, right? Amen. Praise God. Yeah. But the point is this. The point is that Ozzy has a boss. Right? And the Holy Spirit is Ozzy's boss. Now, let's, let me, let's even tell you something. We wanted to teach marriage and divorce a long time, but the Lord said, don't teach it. It was, it was amazing that it was even on Saturday that he said, teach it. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord revealed that. And then the Lord said, we should see that it is posted on YouTube wow. so that people can have access to it. So let's even, let's post it first. Okay. The one that has been taught already. Let's have it on YouTube so that people can feast on it. And please, when you go to the YouTube to listen to the teachings, make comments. Let's hear your comments. Then from, maybe from your comments, we can see things that will... Because the Lord likes to see your response. Alright? Praise God. So, let's feast on that first. Then, Daddy Franklin, don't worry. In the lines of teaching. As you can see, today was not married, but see how the Lord pushed us into that area. Uh, 
<laughs> you know, was it? Let's, let's digest the one. We, yeah, you want to ask a question? Yeah. Since I just think you asked a question. Um, yes, I was about to um, talk about, you know, does marriage be because. Oh, God, I So many experiences, right? <laughs> because, you know, like you said, when a man wants, you know, a man finds somebody, they actually have to go to the pastor of the church and the other thing. You know, this thing is so complicated. And right now, my heart is going out to people that are not married because I don't know how many people or how many men of God actually, you know, have this insight about marriage. Are you Sister Elizabeth? Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, that's Sister Esa. Interesting. Sister Vivian. From your voice, we were. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Amen. 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 You know, actually, you know, my heart goes to, you know, people that are not married because if the shepherd of the house, you know, don't know, uh, they have enough revelational knowledge to pass, you know, or to give out to the sheep in the fold. I don't even know. It, it's a total chaos altogether. True. Because True. you don't know we have to start or we have to end. Major. And apart from that, people meet meet the wrong people, marry the wrong people. Because first and foremost, the one you are looking up to is just directing you in it's like enter skelter. And <laughs> if you try to do your, you know, it's like, no, I'm like this way, it's like you are not submissive, you are disobedient. You are manipulative. You are, oh God. Don't worry. Don't worry. That's that solution has come. All right. Let, let's end. Let's, let's stop. Sister Justin. You want to? Let's give our offerings. Please lift your offerings. Then Sister Justin will ask her question. Let's take your question. Okay. Why would you give our offerings? My question is What if you went to the man of God and he gave you the wrong counsel? Yeah. And he knows that that man or that woman is not your wife or your husband and the Lord told him. But then he gave you a wrong counsel and pushed everything for you to marry that man. Yeah, see, see. And then you find out later he's After the marriage. right man for you. After marriage. Are you stuck with that marriage? Yeah, you, of course, yes. You are married. God hates divorce. <laughs> God hates divorce. And moreover, the thing is this. Um, something we, in that teaching on marriage and divorce, the truth of the matter is this. That so-called wrong man that the lady thinks she married, is actually not a wrong man. She only married her kind. <laughs> wow. Sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Don't worry. Sorry. Uh, by the time Brother Christian makes that teaching available on YouTube, you you listen to it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Sing it to him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.
May the peace of God be with you. May you prosper and flourish. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. May the right hand of God uphold you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. For glory and grace. For glory and grace. Sister Linda, I would like you to call and bless God's people and dismiss the class. Let thy glory be our Oh, yeah.